Immerse yourself in the profound insights offered by Father Chuck Belmonte as he delves into daily reflections on various gospel passages from the Bible. October 1st, Tuesday. Should I pray with the Psalms? The Psalms are the prayer book of the Church. We can memorize some of them so that His praise will always be on my lips. Psalm 34, verse 1. Saint Jose Maria advised people to use the Psalms in their prayer. Very often we can draw our password, that is, our aspiration for the day, from the responsorial Psalm of the Mass. That password will then be liturgical and it will give our day a more supernatural tone. If you have done something wrong, be it big or small, go running back to God. Savor those words of the psalm. The Lord will never spurn or disregard a contrite and humbled heart. What does it matter if you have the whole world against you with all its power? You keep going. Repeat the words of the psalm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? Though an army pitched camp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. If we are waylaid, assaulted by the temptation of discouragement, opposition, struggle, tribulation, a new dark night of the soul, the psalmist places on our lips and in our minds these words, I am with him in the time of trial. Jesus, compared to your cross, of what value is mine? Alongside your wounds, what are my little scratches? Compared with your love, so immense and pure and infinite, of what value is this tiny little sorrow which you have placed upon my shoulders? What follows is a small sampling of psalms worth learning for different occasions. For staying close to Christ, Psalms 1 and 19 speak movingly of devotion to God's law and the precious fruits that this brings. For loving God in times of grief, Psalm 34 is a gritty, heartfelt prayer of one who has suffered much, yet continues to praise the Lord and find peace in Him. For moments of repentance, the greatest act of contrition ever written, Psalm 51. For trusting, He will never abandon us. Psalm 77 is an extraordinary testimony to God's ever-presence. For appreciating divine beauty, Psalm 84 is a lover's psalm, joyfully contemplating the delights of God. For seeing Christ in the Old Testament, Psalms 2 and 110 foreshadow the person of Jesus in dramatic ways. For rejoicing in God's creation, Psalms 103 and 139 are privileged place within creation as beloved children of the Father. For ease of memorization, Psalm 117 is the shortest of them all. This prayer of praise can be memorized in minutes and repeated for a lifetime. For seasons of extreme desolation, Psalms 22 and 88. The latter is the only psalm to end on a note of despair. Yet the fact that the psalmist is praying at all is itself an act of trust in a God who hears our cries and cares for our needs. For giving praise to God, Psalm 150 speaks to us of the greatness of God and the fulfillment we find in giving glory to Him. I would be delighted to extend an invitation to you once again tomorrow for another insightful reflection on the Gospel by Father Belmonte.